my name is David Brooks, and I'm the district sales manager for Styles Machinery here in the Southeast. Uh, the name of my presentation is a bit deceiving. Uh, how I'd build my family business sounds like how I would build a business from a scratch start. It's really easy uh, to, to talk about that uh, in the imaginary world of webinars. So I could build a business uh, making millions of dollars in just minutes. Buy a building, buy machines, get employees, make cool stuff. That's a whole lot easier said than done. Ach achieving crew true growth is difficult and often very overwhelming. So hopefully the time we spend together this afternoon will leave you guys with a roadmap to personal growth strategy. So let's define what a small business is. So it's typically owned by an individual, a family, or a partnership. The definition of a small business is defined by its size and revenue. So a local bakery that has 10 employees could be defined as a small business, or this was surprising, a manufacturing facility with less than 500 employees. So ask yourself, where do I fit in? So what you see here is a pastry also known as the everything bagel. As a small business owner, you are the everything bagel. You're a manufacturer, a designer or an engineer, an accountant, and a salesman. So people tend to forget that you guys are in sales just as much as you're in manufacturing. But being the everything bagel, you're also a human resources, direct, human resources director. Often you find yourself as a family counselor to your employees. And when your machines or equipment fails because of age, you're a mechanic or a technician. You're a purchasing manager because you've got to buy the boards or the materials to produce. And at the end of the day, after you produce things, you're often a logistics manager or a delivery guy. And that is why you're the everything bagel. But if I could simplify that into three simple words, you're a leader. You're a mentor to your employees or some of your younger employees, or maybe you're a mentor to your children who work in the business. But you're an entrepreneur. These are also qualities we strive for in life. So let's get back to the business. And it's inspiring to me to see the human makeup of our industry. So when I was researching for this, more than two thirds of the companies that we work with at Styles Machinery are considered small to medium sized businesses. They're started by husbands and wife teams, fathers and sons, uh, brothers, fathers, or it could, been, could have been passed down from generation to generation. So let's talk about our space. Whether I talk to customers about growth, one of the first things they say is about their facility. I need more space. I don't have enough room for that. I have outgrown my building. In this picture, I see a large room filled with stuff or junk. What the owner of this room sees is their valuables stacked in orderly piles. Think about how much room they would have for a couch, a bed, a desk, if they didn't have those valuables in the room. So when I was searching for or preparing for this event, I couldn't believe it when I searched YouTube for woodworking hoarding, but there was actually a really produced, a really well-produced video on this subject matter. So I thought I'd share a little portion of it with you. Down here, I have a collection of some woodworking magazines. Uh, there's some old ceiling tile here, uh, some wire grommets you can use in cabinetry there. I have some scrap wood over here. Great place to have scrap wood is in a workshop. Cut off from an old closet door. Uh, don't ask me why I still have it, but I still have it here. You never know when it's going to come in handy or something. Oh, look, some more wire 
Oh, look, some more wire grommets. Hey, who would have guessed? Well, you know what? There's no sense of putting stuff away. You just never know when you're going to need it. Yeah, I like to keep some wood shamans on the floor. I mean, they come in really, really handy for, uh, I don't know. Over here I have um, bolts and screws and stuff been sort of through that I keep here on the floor. Uh, on the work cuts, I, like uh, uh, I like to keep a uh, battery charging station. And over here we have caps, miscellaneous caps, which are great for using uh, glue. They could probably use to be tidied up just a little bit. Okay. So hopefully you guys can't relate too much to Raymond, but you know, if you're Raymond, what can Raymond do? He can clean up the shop area. He can get rid of that scrap in the corner or even on the racks. He can remove non-essential unused equipment. How many times do you walk by a shaper that hasn't been used in 20 years and possibly doesn't even run? The result, of this can be 30% more shop space or even a healthier work environment. When I practice what I preach, look how much space is on my countertop now that everything is put away. So now that we've touched on the facility, let's talk about the employees and some employee development. In order to grow, I need to find employees. Or maybe you found yourself saying, I wish I could find an employee who could just read a tape measure. But maybe your best employee has not even peaked yet. So mentor your key employees. Develop them from within your own organization and build a positive attitude. The productivity of an employee who has a positive attitude is priceless. So I don't really know where I got this, but I loved it so much I took a picture of it and replicated it to hang on my kitchen so my kids can see it every day. And uh, believe me, I remind them of it every day. So if A, B, C, D, E, F, G equals a number, one, two, three, four, so on and so forth, then if you add up the letters that spell knowledge, they equal 96%. If you add up the letters that spell hard work, they equal 98%. Both are really important, both solid A's but just fall short of 100%. If you add up the letters or the numbers that are with the letters of attitude, you get 100%. I uh, absolutely think that this holds true in life and in business. With a positive attitude uh, to the challenges small business owners face in today's world, anything is possible. So another way to grow is to empower your employees. Teach what you know. Understand the way that they think. Yeah, this is an interesting slide because in today's world, you may have very few builders in the uh, workplace, but you have so many generations working in the same work environment. You can't motivate a baby boomer the same way you can motivate a Gen Y or a millennial. Another way to develop your employees is by enrolling them in a continue, continuing education program. Stiles University is an IACET accredited institution. We can teach students everything from design software to teaching your service personnel how to work on and service your own equipment. For more information on this, just visit our Stiles website or go to stilesuniversity.com. So now, that we have addressed the housekeeping, we've addressed employee development, and we're getting the most out of our building and employees. Where do we go? Let's talk about software efficiency. A good place to start is with software. Uh, software will allow you to create and design and build in a digital world, and this is often known as CAD. Creating and outputting programs directly to your machine is the CAM functionality of the software. Streamlining the process and eliminating many of the steps that are so time consuming and often wasteful. There are multiple CAD CAM softwares on the in the marketplace. Uh, all of these, or almost all of these, can help increase productivity. Styles Home Ag can provide you with CAD CAM software that we call Home Ag IX. 
This is formerly known as Wood CAD CAM, but we've recently rebranded it to Be Current. Here's a quick screenshot of the environments of Home Ag IX. So let's talk about hardware and what it can do for you. In 2017, I had the opportunity to work with a little small company and we put together a couple of machines to enhance their production. The overall investment was less than $200,000. They made a business decision to purchase the technology and enhance their ability to provide quality components and finished goods in a timely manner without break breaking the backs of their people. That was a key point. So in six, 2016, his annual revenue was around 1.7 million. In late second quarter of 2017, they purchased the equipment, the same pieces that you see here on the screen, a, a flat table nesting machine and a drilling machine for less than 200,000. He increased his revenue in 2018 by $2.4 million. This is approximately 40% increase in business. He was able to do this because he was able to increase the ability to push more projects through his factory in the same amount of time. At the same time, he was able to push through more products. He was able to increase his productivity or production and increase his margin, which was a double win. So what's next for growth? Let's address cutting. You may be cutting on something that looks like this. Hopefully, not on something looks like this, or even something that looks like this. Finding the right tool for the right job is crucial. Which one is right for you? A panel divider, also known as a panel saw, is capable of cutting hundreds of sheets in a, in a workday. And we consider a workday about 400 minutes. Or a CNC nested based router, which is capable of cutting less than 100 sheets a day. This all based on the configuration of the machines and the cut pattern. So why a divider? Why would you go through the per, with the purchase of a, of a panel saw? Saws typically give you a better yield, especially when they're paired with optimization software like CutRight. Saws also allow for future growth. Choosing a saw over a router is also dependent upon your parts makeup, you know, squares and rectangles. So another factor is space. Will your building allow for the saw? Most will. A panel saw or a panel divider takes up just a smidgen more room than a sliding table saw. Uh, for all you guys not in the South, a smidgen is a Southern word for small. So why a nested base router? Well, you'd have a reduction in labor. Why? Because the router can not only cut the squares and rectangles, but it can bore and drill as well. Routers can also often be less, <laughs> less expensive. A CNC is flexible. It cuts rectangles, squares, and circles. Our smallest CNC router nowadays can take up just 300 square feet on the floor. So how do you know which option is best for you? Build a relationship with your equipment supplier. Trust them to give you advice and proper consultation and to help you build your business. They understand your pain points. We study trends and we knew about acrylic high gloss panels way before they even hit the US market. And most importantly, the relationship you create with your equipment supplier will help you build your business and drive your company to the next level. So, not all machines are created equal. This is a quick video of two exact machines, but one machine has an option known as the power plant. It's the same cutting pattern on both machines, same operator, same material, same cutting speed, everything is the same. In fact, the machine is the same. You just have one option turned off. The machine at the bottom is running this pattern with power addition. You don't see really any huge advantage until about a minute and 45 seconds in. So I'm gonna let you guys kind of watch and digest this video.
What if you didn't have a relationship with your equipment supplier and trust them? You may have never known about that power clamp option that can save you 30% in cycle times. What used to take you all day to complete now only takes a couple of hours. The same goes for CNC world. The same goes for the CNC world. The addition of a push-off device can increase the machine's productivity by 30%. What would 30% increase in capacity do for you? If you're familiar with CNC routers and a CNC push-off device, this is a quick video of it. I've, I started the video halfway through the cycle. So what you're seeing is the machine finishing a drilling and routing cycle. And what it's gonna do after it's done with all of the machining, it's gonna grab another sheet with some suction cups from the left. It's gonna drag a new sheet across the table. And while it's doing that, it's going to clean the table from any dust and debris, while at the same time, pushing the finished parts to an outfeed belt that can be removed in a safe area so that the machine can be loaded once again and run. Now that's efficiency. All right, so we're gonna change subjects again. We're gonna go from cutting to banding. I can honestly tell you that if your edge bander is green, it's time to either buy a new one or start researching it now. I firmly believe that run your machines until they die, but at the same time have a plan. Uh, often lead times for new machines are six plus months. To get more capacity, you need more speed. 60 feet plus a minute is not uncommon anymore. Edge banders have a lot more features available and are applying the best edges we've ever seen. Edge material is constantly changing. High gloss, zero edge, coiled veneers, thousands upon thousands of colors. You know, upgrading your bander could be the result of your customers just demanding it. Over the last five years, we've seen trends really pushing the envelope of technology. Zero edge in the kitchen bathroom industry is, is blowing up. Another industry is the healthcare industry. PUR glues, we're seeing a lot more people using PUR glues. Faster feed speeds, joint trimming, contour trimming, also known as, as corner rounding. We've even incorporated the application of cleaning agents into the bander. But the number one reason to update your edge bander is the number of perfect edges that you need to make. So what if your business requires the cut capacity of the panel saw? Or maybe you already have a panel saw. What route do you need to take for all your drilling, for all your drilling needs? And pun intended on that one. A smart choice for the small shop would be a vertical drilling machine. Here on the left, we have our Comag Drilltech V200, and on the right is this larger brother, the Drilltech V500. Both take up very little shop space, about 150 to 200 square feet. The Drilltech V200 currently holds the record for the most machines ever built by Homag and sold worldwide. Some of the features that I really like about this machine is the 13 vertical spindles, four horizontals, one x-axis grooving saw, a seven horsepower router, a four position tool changer, an extremely small fo footprint, and zero setup times. Zero setup means zero pods to set up and possibly, ac possibly accidentally route through. Here's a quick video of a machine part being run.
So just over a minute to complete that part with no setup. Let's move over to the Drilltech V500, the big brother to the 200. This machine has a split drilling head capable of drilling both the front and the rear adjustable shell poles at the same time. I, this is the descendant of one of my favorite machines, the BHC 350 or S350. It has two split 10 vertical drilling spindles, 16 horizontal, an XY grooving saw, a 13 horsepower router motor, a four position tool changer, an incredibly small full footprint, and again, zero setup, which means no pods. Here's a quick video of that machine in operation. That machine's pretty cool. So you've improved your employee morale. You've improved your ability to design and produce software drawings. You've sped up the time between the office and the production floor. You've increased the machine's capacity and decreased production times. Your business is now more efficient. You have built a safe and clean working area. Where do I go from here? How do I build upon what I already have? Well, that's easy. Material handling. In the past, if you go with material handling, you have lift tables. Lift tables keep your employees' backs healthy. Maybe incorporate a scissor lift into your build table to allow the builders to choose what height they work at. In the past, I've had a lot of questions regarding this, this lift table. So let's take a deeper dive into the table. It's simple and efficient. Build cubby holes for your hardware, your screws, your whatnots, maybe a holster for your drill. Make it your own using this as a blueprint. So what is your why? Hopefully because you want better employee morale or attitude, or maybe you wanna allow for faster delivery to your customers, or you wanna make higher margins through efficiencies, offer flexibility in your product offering, machine connectivity through software, or provide just a healthier work environment for your folks. Or it's as simple as just getting your Saturdays back. How many people are working on Saturdays just to finish up the week? I don't know where I found this uh, footnote or, or quote, uh, but I thought it was really relevant to manufacturing. Efficiency is doing better what is already being done. So, Thank you guys for taking time to listen to me ramble. Uh, I appreciate you and I love this awesome industry that we're in. Just remember in these crazy times, you are all essential.